and we are streaming live right now. As we prepare to enter into 2021, a year that I feel like most of us really need in a time like this. And we are glad for all of you who are joining us in these moments. And we have a very special guest that we're gonna get into in just a couple of seconds as we make sure that we are live. This is working great. You know, we're, we're continuing to develop this uh, ability to do things over the internet, to reach all of you in unique ways. And so now that we are all set up and it looks as though everything is good to go, we will begin. And we welcome you to episode number 56 of Recalled to Serve. My name is Father Ricks. I'm joined here, not just by my dear brother, Father Joe, but also a near, dear brother to me, Father Bill, who has been a part of our ministry and has been a very active member of our community in helping us try and grow and reach people in ways that they couldn't have been reached before. And his story is phenomenal. But today, on this New Year's Eve, it feels as though a lot of things have built up over 2020. Things that we feel internally, the emotions that plague our souls. And it feels like everything comes to a boiling point, especially when we prepare to turn over that calendar into 2021. And we're going to see how this conversation goes. We're going to see how all of us are dealing with both the trauma of 2020 in whatever form that might take and what we're looking for in 2021, which is the promise of new life, especially after Christmas. We try to reflect on all of that. And I, I am so excited for you to join us. I am more than excited for the conversation to follow with two of the most amazing, incredible individuals, most caring and compassionate individuals when it comes to overcoming adversity and finding a way to reach people where they need to be reached. So without any further ado, we welcome you into the space. And I will turn it over to my dear brother, Father Joe. Before we start today's service, and it's going to be just a, a short prayer service of uh, the seventh day and the octave of Christmas, um, I just have to point out like how much I, I love both of you, but um, Father Bill, why is his face so big and he's the smallest among us? He's like, <laughs> I know why, because God is shining upon him. So with that in mind, let us pray. A child is born for us and a son is given us. His scepter of power rests upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Messenger of Great Counsel. Today's reading is from the first letter of John. It is 2 colon 18 21. It is a powerful reading. Normally we don't do the reading and the gospel, but this one is so poignant today. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many antichrists have appeared. Thus we know this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of our number. If they had been, they would have remained with us. Their desertion shows that none of them was in our number. But you have anointed that comes from the Holy One, and you have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you do, and because every lie is alien to the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, especially my brothers and sisters in the PCC, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And Father and Bill, we turn it over to you for the gospel reading. Our holy gospel today comes from St. John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light, 
the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory. The glory is of the Father's only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Never has anyone seen God, the only begotten Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord praise Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And praise to both of you. You two are fine, dignified, godly priests that do the work that we're called to do each and every day. And you do so without drama, without challenges, without, without even looking toward yourself for, for advancement or growth. We have endured together, the three of us, the most deadly year in United States history. More people have died this year than any other year, including World War II. This is a year to lament. This is truly a year where we should be anxious and sad and and upset. It is. But the three of us remain steadfast in our focus to God, to service, and most of all to each other, that we are called to come together. Um, you know, Father Bill, especially you, you know, Father Ricks and I have known each other since seminary days, but you're the Vicar General of Pennsylvania. You're my right hand um, when it comes to leadership of the church in the Northeast. Um, we've had so many people, just like the first reading of John, that have deserted, that jumped ship. And I know, I know that a lot has to do with the stress of COVID, the stress of ministry. This is not easy. You know, when I left the police department and I discerned more clearly the call of God. And that first year was at Dunwoody, the Roman Catholic Seminary in Yonkers, New York. And I really thought, you know, being a cop, doing all those hard, challenging things, dealing with crisis, that being a priest was gonna, oh, I'm gonna light candles, I'm gonna do that incense thing, it'll be so much fun. Um, And that's not the case. This has been, um, I know for the three of us, counseling and being present, being in the pit with those who are suffering has been, has taken its toll. But I'm looking to both of you, the two people I trust um, so much. I, I'm gonna throw in Father Sean as well. I wish he was here with us, but I know he is with spirit. I look to both of you for inspiration. How do we go into 2021 with a better mindset, with better hope? How does God get to speak to us more clearly? I had a wonderful um, experience this morning Uh, scrolling through Facebook in my morning routine of getting ready for the day, just trying to decompress a little bit before I got into things. And I went past this one post and it said, drop the, a little bit of advice as to how we should uh, reflect on 2020. And one of the responses um, to that was, you know, how did you approach 2020? And uh, for me, it's when everything came to a halt here in Pennsylvania, we couldn't do anything. Um, the governor made an order that we were to stay at home, which was a smart and a responsible thing to do. And in doing that, uh, you know, all of the extra stuff that had gone on, you know, in 2019 was taken away. We were stripped down to bare bones. What was essential? What was necessary? And so 2020 for me um, could be labeled with one word. And uh, it goes back to Uh, One of the things that we strive to do as Franciscan priests, and that is simplicity. 
Um, and so the reason that I got through 2020 and I'm not ready to pull whatever hairs I have remaining out of my head is that I was able to really embrace that Franciscan charism. You know, what does it mean to live simply? Um, and it's not just about things. It, it's definitely not just about things. It's about how you prioritize. What does it mean to live simply? And for me, it meant that, you know, I was going to control the things I could control. I wasn't going to try to control things that I couldn't control. But what I was going to do is I was going to strip everything down to what mattered, what was essential in my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, moving forward through 2020, the focus was on family. It was on God. It was on spirituality. And it was on the parish. And when I was able to focus on those things and let go of whatever else was out of my control, um, I felt a sense of purpose, not, not just in, um, you know, in, in my life, but in how I was going to help people get through this in their lives. And that's what pushed me through 2020, that, just that one word, simplicity. And I, I guess from my approach, I I would totally agree that um, that it, that is something. Trying to figure out, like you said, Father Bill, the core essence of what is truly important, not just in our own eyes, but in the eyes of God. <sighs> the thing that I take away, and it kind of runs parallel to that, is the essence of humility, and the acceptance that you can't control everything around you. I think that's been more evident for all of us than anything else <laughs> over this past year is that constant reminder that we're, we can't always be in control. And there's a, there's a real challenge. I think that as when it comes to, especially um, people who are ministers like ourselves and, and trying to do good things, we think that we can be that conduit. And when we fail, it can be hard on us and we can try and compensate for that in different ways when we fail. And yet the reality is, is that that is something that I think is a universal feeling this year when, whether it's all the way back from Easter, summer break, Thanksgiving, Christmas, now New Year's, we don't have control over what we can do to you know, make the world a better place in that particular way, and it's a it's a real challenge that I've I've found, and I know you know Father Joe as as we were talking before, the challenges with our our progressive Catholic Church, where it feels like there's some compensation things where it's like we can't control these one thing, this one thing, but we're trying to control other things in ways that we probably may not have done before, but it, we, we have to maintain that element of control. I know I feel that way in my own life, especially when it comes to New Year's resolutions, trying to figure out what it is that I'm going to do in this coming year to make myself a better person, a better Christian, better priest. And there is only so much that we can do to be able to control the situations around us. The rest of it is on the community that surrounds us. And this is what I talked about last Sunday is that we are surrounded by a group of blessed souls who can lift us up and support us. And we should be willing and open to leaning on it after all the time that we've spent over this past year, this these past nine months of trying to figure out how it is that we're going to find a way in the new world that we're going to be entering into in 2021. And so there's that, there's that tension between what we want personally and what is best for those who, in theory, we would like to serve. And that's, that's kind of where I fall. It, it's, it's this weird tension that I feel. You both brought up amazing points um, that I think reflecting on is absolutely necessary as we start another, another year of hope. The idea of we do make things so complicated and to focus on simplicity. What a great theme, what a great idea to move into 2021 to make things simple and truthful and honest. And Rick, your idea of um, control or the idea of relinquishing control, letting it go sometimes. I mean, you know, we are allegedly progressive Catholics. We're gonna be working on that name this week. Uh, but other than that, we are different from Rome in a very real way. The independent Catholic movement, the old Catholic church was founded on the theory 
the challenge of the infallibility of the Pope, of a supreme leader. Um, that is a man. And that's first and foremost, the most problematic because I truly believe more than ever that a woman should be in charge of the church. It's the only way to make things work. Um, but in all seriousness, old gray haired men that um, need a better sense of simplicity, a better sense of relinquishing control is what needs to be done. But I wanna end and put in my component, um, focus on simplicity, focus on relinquishing control. And for me, focusing on, on gratitude. Um, Rick, you and I were very fortunate. We did not get COVID-19. Father Bill was one of the first in Pennsylvania where they didn't even have testing. And thank God because of his strength and endurance, but I truly believe mostly because of God. Um, he is strong and healthy and doing great. But I am thankful that we've endured and we've lived through this. We have lived through a pandemic where more people have died than any other time in, in history. That's first and foremost, but we're here for a reason. We're here to do something strong and important. Um, Father Bill, you and I have done our fair share of graveside services in the past uh, nine months. And uh, God, how I don't wanna do another one. And I know uh, that they're, they're coming. And the second wave we're in the midst of, the new virus that's um, the new adaptation from England has got me so scared and I can't wait to get that vaccine. But even before that, I just wanna be grateful that we're here, that we have our faith to sustain us, that we're moving forward. Normally we pray and we will pray for those lost, all those souls that are with God now because of this. But I, I wanna offer a special prayer today a request from Father Stephen from Albany for a young woman named Kate, who has been trying to get pregnant for um, a number of years. And they detected finally after treatment in vitro and tons and tons of medicine, they detected yesterday a heartbeat within her body from uh, a child to be. And, you know, thinking back, we're on uh, the octave of Christmas, Father X. And I love how important that season is to you. Um, but that's the season of Jesus, of new birth. Of, and it's not just a little baby in a crib where there's no room at it in. It's, it's new birth for all of us. And I know the three of us are going to have a new birth um, together. And I, you know, a shout out to all of our listeners. It's time to, if anything, COVID has taught you to slow down, to be aware of what's important in life. And for many of us, myself in the forefront, it's faith, it's God, it's purpose, it's service. Those of you that are willing to join us, um, think about the Friars of St. Joseph. It's, you don't have to be ordained, it's secular as well as um, those who are clergy. It is men, women, married, divorced, LGBT, trans, anyone who wants to serve God, come and join us. We are progressive in that way. That's the way we hope to change 2021, but we can only do it with the help of you. So think about joining us. Father Bill. I, I think another thing to bring up is um, rather than how we're gonna change uh, 2020 or our, our outlook for uh, 2021 rather, is that to look at how 2020 has changed us is an important mm -hmm. uh, thing to look at. I'll never forget growing up uh, with my grandparents who lived through the Great Depression. Um, you walk into their house and they've got paper towels drying over the handle on the on the oven. Um, you know, Grandma, why why is that hanging there? Well, I'm drying out so I could use it again. I only uh, w wiped up some clean water with it. But we can use it again. The Great Depression. Um, for them changed the way that they thought about a lot of things. And so that never left them, that stayed with them. And those changes that they made, you know, you add up how many rolls of paper towel she saved over the years, it makes a big difference. And so, you know, looking at it from our 2020 COVID-19 pandemic that we've endured, um, you know, 15, 20, 30 years from now, um, how, how can we say that 2020 has changed us? You know, what are those things that are going to carry over into our lives, you know, moving forward? Um, I think, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people uh, haven't really changed anything. And I think that that's the reason we are still dealing with such terrible numbers with this pandemic, is some people haven't bothered to change anything. 
Um, but for those who have, I think that one of the things that is going to be um, a change in their life is, you know, uh, being concerned about others, um, caring about the well-being of the people around them, um, being courteous, being kind, being patient, learning that some things are not instantaneous, that sometimes we have to wait. Um, that was the big thing uh, during Advent. Uh, we had we have a lot of help here at the parish, which I am so grateful for. So every Sunday during Advent, we had a different preacher. And uh, it was one theme that every one of them brought forward during their homilies was patience and waiting. And that's a, a thing that I have to learn. You know, I, I'm not the kind of person who appreciated, um, you know, having to wait. You know, everything is instant anymore. But 2020 taught me that sometimes you have to wait. And uh, for me, that's the thing that's going to carry into 2021 is that I'm not going to be so anxious when things aren't going to happen immediately. I'm not going to worry about them. You know, sometimes I have to wait. Sometimes I have to be patient. And by waiting and being patient, I've learned care, concern, um, all of those wonderful virtues that, you know, you think that as a, a well-formed priest that I would naturally carry with me, but that's not always the case. And so I'm going to let those things carry with me into 2021 and hopefully many, 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 many years into the future, just like my grandmother with how she changed her, um, her habits uh, during the depression, stayed with her. And I'm hoping that those things stay with me. Father Ricks, I'm going to ask you to tell a grandmother story after I tell mine. Um, apparently my grandmother was not as um, affluent as Father Bill's because we didn't, she didn't have paper towels. She used old dish rags. But what I do remember that she saved vividly was tin foil. And it would be, it would get, a, it would be a ball that was larger and larger and larger. Ironically, um, just two days ago, I used the last sheet of tin foil in that box. And I was so upset, not because I ran out of tin foil, but because I had to go shopping again to go back to a store which is the most frightening thing to me today. And then when you even go to the store, even here now in Florida where I am, that paper aisle with the paper towels and the toilet, it's empty again, they're gone. So that message from both of our grandmothers about not so much being frugal, but just valuing things that we tend to throw away so, so quickly that maybe shouldn't be thrown away so quickly to hold on to things a little bit more carefully and to recognize their value and importance, even in their primary simplicity, um, tin foil, paper towels, simple things that today frighten the heck out of me because they're so dangerous to even to get. Uh, I'm hoping that Rick's, um, you know, we've lost our grandmothers and I, the pain of that is tremendous. Uh, I got the honor of, of meeting Rick's grandmother Regis and um, she has just endured surgery, and I'm, I'm hoping he shares a beautiful story about her, like we did. I will. So it is like as I'm as I'm hearing about these stories, um, the thing that kind of sticks in my mind, and just as a um, kind of setting the scene, um, my my grandmother was married to a uh, a veteran um, who passed away about five years ago. Uh, my grandfather Robert, and even before that, my grandmother has always been somebody who has paid attention to the little things, the details, those things that may not seem important for somebody passing by, but was important for her. Her garden was the most important thing. She's living in Florida right now in the Tampa area. And after going through surgery, she wasn't able to go out and tend for her garden the way that she had for decades prior to that. And it was a very hard thing for her to try and reconcile that it wasn't so much about these grand gestures or big plans, stuff like that. It's about the little things. And that garden, you know, whenever, whenever a hurricane would come through and destroy everything, she'd be out there the next day, planting new plants, raking up all the leaves, trying to make it as good as, it, as she thought that it should be. And the care to that and attention to that detail, the little things is something that, I don't know. I mean, 
you know, Father Bill, I feel I, you're you're a millennial, right? <laughs> so we fall into that same category where <laughs> Joe, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even even leave you with that same question. But no, I mean I I know I know for me personally, uh, I find and it it's always a reminder when I go there to visit my uh, visit my grandmother, the the importance of attention to detail. I don't think that until this year I fully appreciate appreciated that component, um, but it's always been there. And I feel like these messages are always there for us if we're willing to like open our hearts and minds and be accepting to the fact, can we learn something from somebody else who it feels like, well, why are you, you know, why, why do you have to rake the, you know, the little <laughs> stuff on the side of the yard when no one's ever going to see that? Because it matters to me, is what my grandmother told me. And it's those little things of being open and willing to accept um, things that we don't quite understand, to listen to people who care about things that we might not care about on face value. All of that brings us together and allows us that opportunity for growth in our own personal and spiritual lives. And for me, uh, you know, that, that is something that I, for, for the rest of my days is, is something that I'm gonna hold close to me. And, you know, it, it hurts me during this COVID pandemic not to be able to visit her down in Florida. I know Father Joe, you're down there in Florida right now. And we had had plans originally for me to come down. And obviously in the current environment, that was not going to happen. But it it does remind me constantly to value things that, you know, those around us who love and care about things that are different than us and find a way to try and understand that and maybe we can grow, even if it's in the smallest possible way. I know for, for me now, I care about gardens much more than I ever have <laughs> prior to 2020. So that's just uh, something that's been ruminating in my mind. And yeah, wasn't, wasn't planning on talking about that, but thank you. You know, um, you brought back a beautiful memory uh, about my grandmother. My grandmother lived on the main street in the Northeast, right outside New York City. And there were row houses, so they were all connected. There was no space and there was no front yard. It was the sidewalk and a main street, but she had a garden in the back of that row house that she would spend endless hours. And I was in awe as a child. How are these things growing in the middle of a city? Um, but that was such a gift. And that's the message. Um, I think from, from grandmothers and let things grow, um, let things grow as much as you can. And I am so sad that you're not coming down to Florida, especially to see your grandmother um, during this year. But I know that 2021 will be a time where we can start to gather again, that we can start to come together again, but let's do so by planting more seeds now, seeds of compassion, seeds of understanding, not seeds of separation and running away. And um, it, this has been the most socially isolated time in history, but it's also a way that we've been able to come together through technology, through so many different ways that didn't even exist before. We are doing, we have three amazing priests um, spread throughout the world, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Chicago, Florida, all coming together to give a message of hope to the world. Father Bill. It's pretty amazing that uh, 2020 has had to, um, you know, force us to adapt on how we do these kind of things. And uh, Father Ricks, I know that you had talked um, briefly when we began this uh, podcast about how sometimes as clergy, we feel disappointed that we, we couldn't do the things that we you know, that we had every intention of doing or felt that we should do or we felt we failed at. Um, one of the things that I didn't realize until about halfway through the year was that the parish, uh, instead of declining, was growing uh, during this pandemic. And I think the reason is that, um, you know, we approach what we do in a very different way uh, than other faith traditions. Uh, we tend to approach things on the side of compassion and understanding rather than throwing the rule book at people. 
And so when people were looking for um, something to, you know, to hope in, uh, they were reaching out to their faith. And for a lot of those people, it, it led them to us. And um, instead of, you know, hiding under a rock or, or retreating, um, you know, and saying the church is shut down, that's it. We found new ways of, of doing things. Not that we wanted to, we were forced to, but for whatever reason, um, it caused us to reflect on how we do things, the reasons that we do things, and the people that we do them for. And for us here in Scranton, um, we reached a whole new audience, if that's, uh, that's for the lack of a better word, the, the, the way to put it. And it's because we decided that we were going to do something different and we were going to do it in a new way. Um, you know, we were, we were cutting edge to begin with. Um, we have been broadcasting our um, services live on Facebook for two years um, prior to this pandemic. Um, when everything started shutting down, a priest friend of mine from the Roman Catholic uh, parish that neighbors us said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we're okay. We could just do it the same way we've been doing it. But we had never realized how important that ministry was until it was the only thing we had. And um, we were we were able to reach so many people who were looking for something. And I think on the other end of that, people who were looking, you know, to their faith for answers, um, for comfort in, in everything that was going on, um, they couldn't reach out to their faith in the traditional way. They couldn't walk into a church. And so they were also having to figure out, how am I going to, you know, fill this void in my life? I'm thrilled that we were able to do that for them. But we don't realize the impact um, that we have on people or the audience that we have. Um, there are so many people that have reached out during this pandemic um, with messages of hope and encouragement to us as well. Um, you know, getting positive emails or comments on our, our broadcast saying thank you for what you do um, meant the world because it, it meant to me that we were doing what we were called to do um, and we were, we were making it happen. That's something to be very, very grateful for. And, you know, and to be honest, you know, I'm a little bit, um, as Rick had to point out, I'm not a millennial, um, but I'm glad he reminded me. Um, but I was old school. I felt, you want to see God? Get in your car, come to church. But could I have been more wrong? No, I was. And our last public mass was March 15th. And literally, we did not drop the ball. Not only did we did daily mass each Sunday, but we did um, prayers during pandemic, a daily service every day for 90 days. And we are continuing that with this, with our recall to, to faith, which is continuing every Thursday. Um, and, you know, my adaptation, I'll give Pope Francis a little credit. He, you know, in the Catholic tradition, not going to church, not receiving communion is a sin. And I always took that very, very seriously. But when that, when the Pope said that death and darkness will not have the last word, faith in God will. And then made it clear that you can receive the presence of Christ, the body and blood of Eucharist, not only sacramentally, but spiritually. What a great gift to God's people, and especially you, um, Father Bill. Father Bill continued to serve Mass not only um, in the parish in Scranton, but would have people drive up in cars and still does and goes outside to give communion to them. We've adapted to those little cups when we do have public services, but that tradition uh, may continue um, in the, the years, months and years to come, who knows? The only thing that I do wanna add, cause I think it's important, um, Father Bill, I totally agree. Um, and I, I forgot the word that you use, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a different word. Our congregations have grown virtually, that has grown. Um, but our ministries, especially St. Joseph's Mission Church, and those of you that aren't clear, Father Bill is at St. Francis and St. Clair in Scranton, Pennsylvania. You could Google both of us and go to our websites. Most of our ministry, most of the work we do, um, we do so through weddings, through sacramentals. And of course, we lost a tremendous amount of those during this past year. And we have never um, solicited money um, virtually. It's not something we do, but we have been um, blessed at the mission by people um, actually emailing, Father, we want to send something in. How do we do that? 
And those of you that do wish to do that on both of our websites, both St. Francis and St. Clair in Scranton and St. Joseph's Mission Church in Cliffside Park, New Jersey, go right to our website and um, feel free to, to give what's in your heart. All of the money that we do raise, we do not take a salary as independent Catholics. Everything goes to ministry. Um, in Scranton, Father Bill supervises Father Frank, who does a huge homeless ministry uh, to people in desperate need. Um, so keep us in your prayers like we keep all of you in our prayers. I'm going to ask Father Ricks to do our final prayer. And I know we went over five minutes, but I think that's okay. But I want to do a final reading. I want to dedicate it to my UU friends, especially Reverend Eve, who I miss. Um, it's the daily word from the UU um, reading the last day of the year, December 31st, 2020. And the message of today, one of my favorites, let go and let God. I release the past and I embrace the future. As the year comes to a close, I take time to review how I respond to a period of time that challenged me more than usual. Perhaps my compassion was awakened and I felt moved to serve. Maybe my heart felt full as I prayed for loved ones and for the people I've never met and those that were lost. Looking back, my heart feels full as I recount the lessons that prompted my spiritual growth and the blessings I discovered as I worked through the hardships. I met the coming year with a positive, hopeful attitude and an openness to new ways of thinking. I feel ready for a fresh start and a new beginning now, no matter the obstacles that may come my way, and there will be more obstacles. I remain committed to realizing the highest version for life. And finally ending with, from the book of Revelations, 21.5. And the one who was seated on the throne said, see, I make all things new again. Amen. Father Rick. Amen. Well, I feel like in place of a prayer, um, because this is a prayer in, I think, so many different ways, it would be great for all of us just to be able to share something positive that we've taken out of the year 2020. I'll start. I'll, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds just to uh, think of, of something. But for me, 2020 was a year that started out where there was uncertainty <laughs> and it ended with uncertainty. However, in the midst of this pandemic, the thing that I am most grateful for is the ability to connect with the community of St. Joseph Mission Church through our prayers during the pandemic, through um, all the services that we did on a daily or weekly basis to get to know people in a way that I never would have living in Chicago. It, it allowed a new path forward. And I am truly grateful. And I hope that there are those who are listening who have had that same experience, but man, you know, for, for all the work that we tried to do prior to 2020, try, prior to March, 2020, um, this has opened a door that there is a possibility for infinite future and infinite love to be given in ways that had this not occurred, we never would have stepped into that gateway. And I am grateful and blessed for you, Father Joe, for allowing me to be able to connect with the community in a way that meant so much more than just doing a weekly service or a daily service. It changed the way that I viewed the world. Father Bill. I have to echo that. Um, one of the things that I'm so grateful for is that I have been uh, brought into this wonderful community several years ago now. And um, that it has allowed me to bridge two very important parts of my life, family and ministry. And that, um, you know, my family uh, and my partner, Sean, um, feel so welcome uh, in any of our, our parishes and that we can be family and do ministry together. And, um, you know, being quarantined together at the house, um, you know, being able to have this community behind us and with us and work with them and uh, work with all of you has been such a blessing in, in 2020 in that, um, I can be sustained by such a wonderful, welcoming, um, religious community 
And to have that as the center of my, uh, my life really in 2020, you know, the focus was family and ministry and I could have them both at the same time. And it was such a beautiful and wonderful uh, thing to be able to experience. Beautifully said, both of you. I'm going to, I think, cite three things. Uh, first, um, I am thankful for both of you. I had the honor and the privilege of ordaining both of you in St. Joseph's Mission Church. That's where both of you, um, we got to share brotherhood together. One of my favorite memories, Father Bill, is when we blessed the holy oil um, together in that beautiful service. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be your brothers. That's unbelievably powerful to me. Secondly, I am blessed for those that I was quarantined with, both physically and virtually, especially Daryl, Nancy. Um, and then dear friends surrounded by Diane at the top of the list, um, being there. And so many people from our parish board, uh, Dave and Ronald, both stricken with COVID-19, both who survived. Uh, Cindy and Ann, who have been supporting us repeatedly, Rishi and Robert repeatedly supporting and helping the mission grow. And lastly, um, you know, I, I'm grateful for those I had the honor to say goodbye to. Uh, the first funeral I did, the former police chief, I did it on the street in front of his house. I blessed the coffin with holy water. And then um, John Magenta, um, I did his funeral in a Jewish cemetery, his wife not even able to be there, Karen. But those, even those things at the close of 2020 are great gifts that I got to do, but I'm doing them with you. Um, and the prayer that I will end with for all of us listening, 2021 is already better because we're doing it together. We're doing it with love and we're doing it with hope. God love you.